and welcome to this lab on EIGRP with a little bit of DHCP mixed in. Right now we have all of these routers that currently have no routing information in the routing table. If I do a show IP route, I can see that I can only see connected and local interfaces and networks on this router one. And it's going to be the same all the way around. Router two, show IP route shows that we only have IP addresses assigned to our interfaces. If we look, show IP interface brief, all of our interfaces have IP addresses assigned to them, but there is nothing in the routing table to be able to route to these different networks. So here I have a 10.10.30.0 network that is a point to point, a 10.10.10.0 point to point network, and then we have a 10.10.40 uh, slash 24 network right here and then this router is has all these connected hosts to 10.10.20.0 now currently our hosts do not have any configuration they're currently defaulted to static and what we're going to do is we're going to configure EIGRP to allow these routers to share their routing information and then we're going to configure a DHCP server up here on router zero to be able to allow these hosts to send out a DHCP request to traverse the network through router four, through the switch, through router one or router two, up to router zero. So first let's get started with the EIG, EIGRP configuration on router zero. We're going to go into global configuration mode and we're going to type router EIGRP and we're going to use process one. Now we want to advertise networks and we have to tell EIGRP which networks we want to advertise. So in this case, if we do a show IP interface brief, these are the networks that we want to advertise. So we will type network 10.10.10.0 with a subnet mask of 252 at the end because this is a point to point. And we also want to advertise 10.10.30.0 and that's another point to point uh, slash 30.252 network. So now if we go um, into our, let's see, end out here, show IP EIGRP, and we won't have any neighbors yet because we haven't configured the other side. So let's wait to see anything there, but we'll keep this up here and we will grab router one here. Actually, it won't let me keep both of them up at the same time. But we will see what happens as soon as we configure EIGRP on this side to advertise this interface, to advertise this network out of this interface, we will see a neighbor relationship come up. So let's go into global configuration. Let's do show IP interface brief. It's going to show us the networks that we, are at, we need to advertise for. So we'll type in router, EIGRP, process ID one, network 10.10.10.0. That's a 252, that's a point to point. Let's get all of the subnet mask in there. And we see immediately that our adjacency has come up with gig zero zero over here on router zero. Now we're also gonna advertise 10.10.40.0 and that's a slash 24 network. And that's gonna be that subnet mask dot zero. Do show IP EIGRP neighbor, we see that we have a neighbor adjacency formed with this router up here. All right, we're doing good. So now let's go over to router two, show IP interface brief. These are the networks that we need to advertise. So let's go into router EIGRP one. Network is gonna be 10.10.40.0. And this again is our slash 24 network or 255.255.255.0 network. And we immediately see our neighbor relationship come up for that network with the other router. Now let's do the same with router zero up at the top. Network 10.10.30.0. This is our point to point. And we have our neighbor relationship come up here. Now if we do a show IP route, we can see that the routing table is filled out with dynamically learned D means EIGRP routes to the other network. All right, 
that's to this point to point over here that this router knew nothing about. That is not a locally connected network, therefore it needed to learn about it dynamically from EIGRP. So now we're gonna go down here to router four. And just to prove that we have nothing in our routing table, we will do another show IP route. We can see that we only show our connected local routes. Show IP interface brief shows us the networks that we need to advertise. So we're going to go into global configuration again, type in router EIGRP1, we're using process ID 1. We're going to advertise network 10.10.40.0. This is our slash 24. We see our neighbor relationship come up. Now we're going to advertise this network down here that all the hosts are connected to. So network 10.10.20.0, that's another slash 24 network going to hit enter. Now we're not going to see a neighbor relationship immediately come up because we don't have another router or layer 3 switch running EIGRP on the other side. We only have a layer 2 switch. So now if we test out or if we look at our routing table on the router, we can see that we have this router down here, router 4, has learned about the 10.10.30 network, the 10.10.20 network, which we already knew about. It didn't learn about that. And it learned about the 10.10.30 and the 10.10.10 network. Those are the two that it needed to learn to send traffic. So our interface up here is going to be 10.10.10.1 right here on router 0. Let's test our routing and see if we can ping it. Ping 10.10.10.1. And we can successfully ping it. So we are now sharing all of the information, all of the routing information between routers, and the routers know where to go. So now, we have these PCs down here that are currently set to static IPs, but I want them to be DHCP. So instead of setting DHCP on router 4 here like we could, let's use a scenario where there is a server or another router somewhere else in the network that is handing out DHCP address. So we're going to go up here to router 0, and that's where we're going to configure DHCP. So we're going to type in IP DHCP pool and we're going to give it a name. So let's name it, uh, let's just name it test lab. So now we know that is the name of our DC pool, DCP pool. If we do a show run, we can see that there. We have the pool set up, but we have no configurations in the pool. So let's put some configurations inside of this pool. The first thing we're going to do is define our network. Which one thing that we probably should do in this uh, configuration for DHCP is exclude the IP address right here on router 4 so that DHCP does not hand out this dot one because that is statically assigned to our interface. So let's do that. IP excluded address excluded address. What's our command here? IP DHCP excluded address. Now, we give an option here of a low IP address. Let's just give it a range. We're going to say 10.10.20.1, and we're going to go up to 10.10.20. Let's just go to 25, just to give us that range of addresses to save for DHCP to not hand out. So let's go back into our pool, IP DHCP pool test lab. Now let's define our network. We want to advertise 10.10.20. We want to hand out, excuse me, we want to hand out addresses in the 10.10.20.0 network, and our mask is a 24, a slash 24, or a 255.255.255.0. Now for this network, we also need to hand out its default gateway. Its default gateway is not going to be router zero. Its default gateway is going to be router four, and that is the 10.10.20.1 IP address here on this interface. So we're going to say default router 10.10.20.1. Now in this case, we don't have an internet to get out to, but we will still go ahead and configure a DNS server. It's 8.8.8.8, .8 which is Google's public DNS server. DNS dash server, 8.8.8.8. .8 it still took the shorthand. So now if we do a show run, we can see that we have our DHCP pool successfully configured. 
But there's one more important thing that we need to do here. If we come down to PC0 and we try to configure it to be DHCP, we will not get a DHCP address. And that is because currently, if you remember, broadcasts do not leave the broadcast domain. So router four needs an IP helper address to be able to send where that discover broadcast goes. The first message in DHCP is, this is a discover, that is a broadcast. The router receives it initially and is dropping it right now. We don't want it to drop it. So what we need to do is go into the interface for 10.10.20.1 and we need to configure what's called a helper address. Interface gig 01. We're going to configure a helper IP helper address. IP helper dash address. Now, our helper address is going to be, we're going to give it the interface up here, which is 10.10.10.1. And what this is saying, if you get a DHCP discover request coming in this interface, here's where you need to send that request. And because this router knows about the 10.10.1 network, it's going to immediately send it up here. It's going to add, add, it's going to change the destination to router zero's IP address on this interface. So now if we do another DHCP request here on this router, I mean on this PC, we will see that we immediately get handed the first IP that's available in that DHCP pool, and that's a dot twenty six. And if we want, we can show this in simulation mode. Let's put it in DHCP. I got it. Let's do this. IP config slash release. IP config slash renew. Put it in simulation mode and we will see the traffic converse the network travel the network. So that's our discover request. Let's see it, as you can tell, that's a broadcast. Switch then broadcast the message and these other PCs then discarded the frame because it was not intended for them. Then the, the helper address has then forwarded the information over to the switch and now over to the router, but the destination is up here. The router then receives that DHCP and then it's going to offer another IP address to the PC. So that is the basics of EIGRP and setting up DHCP with an IP helper address on a router that is for that broadcast domain. Hope you guys enjoyed this and let me know if you have any questions.